All right, bro. Welcome to the video, man. What's up, man? Yo. Today we're gonna be answering some questions, bro. Uh, you know, we ain't did like a group video like this like in forever, so it's just a lot of time. We never did it. Never done that. We never did it. Oh, never mind. I guess Why are you lying? This is crazy. Bro. I feel like we're gonna be talking about a lot of shit that y'all need to hear for real. <laughs> hey man, shout out to Rice Cakes, man. Right. How to stay consistent when lacking motivation? I feel like the best person to answer this is Juco, because he's probably the most consistent out of everybody here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have discipline, you know what I'm saying? So, like, like you gotta figure out what you wanna do with the music shit. So whether it's like sending out loops, uh, doing kits, whatever the fuck you wanna do. And then you gotta realize that it's gonna take a few years of doing it before you see results. And most people will quit within like a month, two months. So for me, the best thing I did was just know like what a result I want, and I already knew what I was gonna get. I just had to do it for years straight. But if you have discipline, you'll know that you're not gonna see results, but you're just gonna do it, like regardless, every day when you wake up. So. Facts. I love that. So out of the first two years, how many days did you miss sending samples? How many days did you skip sending samples out of two? Maybe days? like one. Eight hundred days. You only missed one day, probably, because like only when I, I think I only missed a day when I like had a placement drop, like a major placement. I would take like, one day off. <laughs> So every day, <laughs> did you want to cook up or you just cooked up, cook up? I mean, uh, yeah, I don't wake up every day like, oh, I want to make music. Or like, I could go hang out with some friends or some shit. But I'm going to still go do my shit like every day, regardless. Like, but, what makes you, but what makes you do that? Like, what makes you discipline? Because of, like, yeah. of like the life I want to live. Like, That's right. Like, a few years. You got to get the trap. How to stay focused in difficult times. <clears throat> We, we no, the same question. Nah, no, nah, no, that's a different yeah. question. No, that's, that's a different yeah. question. I'm going to answer that. You know, um, even though you see a lot of the uh, success out there, I had some difficult times too. Like, how to stay focused is that you got to understand that all these difficult times, temporary. That shit don't last forever. So, that's how you stay focused. You got to realize that this shit not going to get better by you sitting on your ass. You know, blur that out. So, yeah. You want to make it better? That's how you stay focused. You got to, you got to. You gotta get to work. That's how you make it better at your situation. All right, someone said, "How do you get? How how did you get so consistent at making beats every day? Nigga, just make beats every day. Just make beats every day. Sure. Just make beats every day, bro. No rules." Someone said, "What's the absolute best way to network yourself for places? You got DM people, hella people every day, and you gotta move around. Like, focus on focus on what you're trying to achieve in the network. Like, if you want placements." Placements come through um, producers working with the artist. So if you want to work with this artist, you got to work with the producers around that artist. And if you can't get to those producers, you got to look at the producers who work with them producers. So it's like, there's a rule of seven. Like, if you don't, if you're trying to get to this one person, there's at least seven people around that one person that can help you get to that person. So mm, that's good. That's how you got to network. So in this like in this circle, right? Who, who y'all think the best at network? Like Matt. So. Mm. The network can come in different forms. Yeah. yeah. Networking is about how you put yourself out there as well. Like probably, Mac definitely be putting out there. Yeah. So Nick, why do you think you stand up like, as far as like your brand? Well, that's because I got in a little bit earlier. You got to really stand out. That's why I kind of, I want people to start learning shit that's the hard, the hard stuff to stand out, like instruments, bro. Like if you're in a big city and you're like an instrumentalist or something, like people be needing people that know how to like songwrite, put play keys. On. Play the guitar, sing. So like, I stood out because like, when I was doing the loop kits and the the, the the drum kits and stuff, like, I just kept expanding out to like YouTube and Instagram and stuff like that, and I just kept it going. So that's for me. So nowadays, what I just said, like, standing out using those, um, increasing your value using stuff that a lot, not a lot of producers are doing right now, at least. So I got a question. Well, everything I know right now, if you can still go back in time and still know everything I know, like, which I didn't know. Like, if you were starting from scratch today, what would you do? So the first thing I would do is just get fired. Like, for the, I'd spend a whole year on just, like, getting great. Like, spend at least a year on just the music, not even worry about, like, networking with people or, like, reaching out to people. And then once my shit's, like, at that level where at least it's, like, to the point where, like, I'm confident and I know people will go fuck with it, I would just still get better, but, like, like split my time up to, like, start reaching out to everybody. Probably start with like other loop makers that aren't that big, but are like starting to land records. But just still reach out to all the big guys. But like, if I'm online only, I'm just gonna reach out to all the people. I'm gonna do the reels, do everything I could. Like reels, YouTube shorts, videos, just do everything. But I realized after a while that if I focus on one thing, I could get way farther in that one thing. But I started just trying everything else because it built my brand up. 
So you saying don't spray good? But I think right now you need to kind of have a brand. It's gonna help you like, and like doing the reels and shit is a good, is a quick way to. Make it. like, it's not as hard as doing like long form cuts. It's way quicker to make. Okay, but on the real though, listen. This is what I would do. I would do everything he would. I would do everything he just said. But, like, here's what I would do. Instead of doing everything at once, I would kind of take time to split up and make a schedule. Like, one day, I may have the whole day to make content for YouTube. Um, and then most of the time, like, most of my days, I'm going to make music, obviously. But I would just choose specific days to really lock in on something, like, huge. Like, if it would be, whether it be YouTube or a sound kit company or, like, making a bunch of content, I would do it all in, like, I would take a day. Like, I would say, like, two days at the week to really lock in on something that's like uh, gonna be time consuming. But like the little stuff, like practicing instruments, I would do every day. Um, posting a reel, like I said, that could be knocked out in one day. But you could do like a reel, you could just put, record a reel a day. Oh, okay. Dude, listen, schedule it out, bro. That's your biggest thing, like yeah. schedule your week. Split it up. Yeah, yeah. That's how you do everything at once. Oh, <laughs> you just gotta have value. You always gotta provide value. Like so you can't assume that people don't wanna listen to your beat. That's really what loops, loops is like a cheat code because like you could get to these sessions and it could be all the drummers and then they'd be like, damn, who got some loops? They're going to always want to use your shit because like they rather, instead of using someone's random, the business shit, when they really listen that. But get, getting in rooms is like, mm, sometimes I'd be offering folks like, <clears throat> if you want to link it with a, a drummer, you'd be like, yo, like you ever need me in sessions? I could go from scratch and you make the loop and then you put drums on it, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes you can work like that. Like it just depends. You gotta build relationships. Everybody, everybody just trying to like, let me send loose, let me send loose. So you think, so you uh, think uh, to get a nigga email spamming him ain't enough? Yeah, it ain't enough. I feel like not right now. Nah, man. I feel like you gotta really have because a connection. You gotta have a connection with that dude, man. Like all the people that I locked in with, I'm more than just a sample maker now, bro. Like now people ask me for unfinished beats. Like now people invite me to the studio because like because my samples were so good. They're like, what else can this dude do now? If your samples are super crazy now, that would be fire. But sometimes, bro, here's the problem. Like, a lot of y'all sample makers jump into this stuff instantly without honing your craft first, bro. You got to really get good first. You can't, like, first impressions matter. Like, if someone were to send you some terrible loops and you never heard them before, you're like, I'm never going to open up this shit again. Or at least a year later or something Fact, like that. Bro. So, guys, like, you got to get good first, bro, before you do anything when it comes to placements. Like Juco said. That's you got to you gotta grow your sound. Like, you need to make sure your shit is good, like, consistently. Because, oh, yeah. Bro, imagine your ass, you, you know, and you send a pack of loops to, like, a big producer, right? And then, let's say in a year, you get, you get really good. But you sent him that pack a year ago. And he thought it was ass, so when you send him a pack a year later, he's not gonna open it because he remembers you being ass. Yeah. So you gotta start sending out once you know, like, okay, I'm solidified, like, this is good enough to send out, you know? Producers, when they're starting off, like, I know for me at least, it helped that I was around a lot of better people. Like, mm, there you go. With the Zoom calls and stuff. Yeah. I don't know if I'd be where I'm at if I was not around people that mm, were, like, way better than me. That's probably the biggest thing. Like, if you're by yourself and you're not I'm in sorry. a community with other people, that are gonna critique your stuff, you might not even know your shit ass because yeah. you're nobody's you're not getting opinions. So that, like that's get a huge on Discord. Thing. Get yeah. on Discord. That's another trick, bro. Just surround yourself with people that are way better than you. And you know, they'll tell you your shit's What's ass, that? but it'll it'll grow you, bro. Hey, so y'all be having a career crisis every now and then? What's that? Yeah, for sure. But you just like, what the fuck? I feel like I failed in life, what the fuck going yeah. on? Oh yeah. yeah. No, All the time. Sorry, Mac. Mac, why are you lying? I don't know about For real. Let me go to yourself. This is the yeah. only thing we got. Why would you feel like that? It's the only thing you got. I'll be having a career crisis. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Nah, it's, it's normal. To it's have it's different. I get cause it kind of different. Look, we kind of on our own. Y'all yeah, haven't been on y'all own yet, but it's kind of like just a whole bunch of responsibility, oh, yeah, just yeah, a whole yeah. bunch of shit. Okay. Nah, you kind of got to balance. Like, I don't know. You, yeah. you got to balance making sure so, like right. people straight, everything taken care of. You it's straight lot, taken right. care of, and then you gotta people don't understand. Like a lot of people think, oh. I need to make a million dollars off of beats, but the mm -hmm. fact if you could live off your music, bro, I feel like you already won. You did, Don't that's true. Back. They don't, they don't talk back. And it be right times all the time I be like, man, what the fuck, like, this shit ain't it. Why I go and see a nigga like half my age with all this shit, and I'm like, man, what the fuck? And then I just look and be like, bro, at the end of the day, I look at my phone, look at a DM, and it's another nigga who probably twice as old as me. Oh, I, I got this going on. I got this job going on and shit. It just make me feel thankful sometimes, but at the same time, it's like I be thinking I be over critiquing myself sometimes, like just overcooking my brain. Like, like damn, bro, what the fuck? Like, I'm finna quit this shit. I just told you the other day, y'all think about quitting this shit. Like, it just be shit like that sometimes. I feel like other producers be going through that shit. Nobody just really speak on it, cause when you go on Instagram, all you see is everybody winning. 
Mm-hmm. You don't never see nobody talking about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about some bullshit think, going on. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, there's other things you could do. Like, all of us are capable of making more money than something else. But, like, at the end of the day, if you don't have that passion for it, it's not going to, like, you're not going to, like, if music's what your passion is, like, yeah, and that's what you want to do, and you're doing that. But but even if it's your passion, like, and it gets stressful, bro. Like, it gets super stressful. That's just yeah. how the industry is. Like, but that's why like, that's why consistency. But if you love doing way. it, it's the best thing. Yeah, yeah. You, even if you love doing it, like, and, and but that's yeah, facts, like, bro. TV loves making you doing this shit. But it like, just life. Like, it's just like the life stuff can can bring you down. Yeah, because it it, really it, gets it, it it gets in your way, and then you're like, fuck, bro. Like, I don't even want to do this yeah. shit anymore. It it happens, bro. Like. This shit gets stressful, but you just gotta understand. Like, That's why some producers jump to deals. Like they'll jump on deals because like they need a quick cash to survive, even though it might not be the best for them. But that's yeah. but that's why like if really if you a kid at home and you you 16 and you live with your parents, you could be in Croatia for all I care. Like you really got it better off than a lot of people because you could just get placements off loops. You don't gotta worry about your bills. You might not be able to come to America this and that on some crazy or whatever it is, but like you can still work. Like you could. There's tons of producers who are overseas making hella good bread off here. Yeah. They make content. They own. Um, they don't speak English. They still and they've never been shit. in the studio. In they've their never life. been in the studio all their life, and like they making the craziest shit. They getting the, the biggest producer. So it's like you got to stay consistent in order to combat all that life shit. Yeah, I feel like overall it was better for y'all to chase bigger artists, or y'all y'all, y'all think y'all more successful mm-hmm. chasing like smaller artists and just working with people who make those news, trying to chase a gunner placement, a future placement, where that shit is mentally unstable. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Cause it's it, not it's not possible. This is me speaking real. This is how I think of the sample game. Like, we sending samples off to niggas who and this is if you just asking for a nigga email and then sending him samples. Now, if you're not doing what Mac doing or Juco doing where you build a relationship over time and instead you're just spamming them with shit, never hitting them up again, seeing what they actually want, it's really like you third party and just you really just sending off a, a, a wish. Like you sending off a goddamn GoFundMe account when you send out the samples and like, bro, please pick this. Please fund me type mm. shit. And that's what it really is, bro. It, it took me a while. Like, I'd be like, damn, this nigga not fucking me and shit like that. But it'd be like, at the end of the day, when I actually see these niggas' emails, bro, these niggas got thousands of emails, bro. Oh, bad. Bro, what the fuck made me stand out from everybody else that's sending loops? Especially if I'm putting fucking Lil Baby, Guitar, Dark, everybody else putting that in their fucking loops, bro. So, like, notes. I don't know, bro. I just feel like. The biggest lesson I learned this year from sending samples is just tone it down from like not even spamming, but just make what I do more personal. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Send instead of sending a whole fucking email of shit, and I know this one nigga just make R and B or some shit. Let me actually get these niggas numbers and text them and build relationships and shit yeah. like that. Because at the end of the day, bro, I'm gonna be real. We all make music. It's a million of us. Like it's a million of us producers doing this shit. Thanks. Only certain individual ones stand out. I don't think I stand out because of my sound. I ain't got no sound. I stand out because of my content. Mac stand out because he got a sound. Mac got that brand that makes him stand out. Cloud stand out because he just all around, do it all, content, everything. Juco stand out because he consistent. So I feel like you just got to find that thing that make you stand out and build a relationship more off of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like Even with the sample game too, I learned like, you could keep sending out emails. Like Juco method, <clears throat> Juco method work good because like he knows that he's the most consistent out of everyone in the whole planet. The whole planet. That's why he missed one day. Because theoretically, all them other producers are not going to send out every 365, right? So if you go send, statistically he sent 364, his chance of being always seen is way higher than everyone else's. Because he's every day in that bitch. But guaranteed. It's like that, that's one way to do it. But if you don't want to be sending out every day, you want to build your brand on Instagram and network and show people like, you moving around. Are you in LA? Are you in Atlanta? Are you in Miami? Working with these artists. And when people see that, like, okay, cool. You be like, oh, I fuck with your beats, bro. I fuck what you did with this person's song. Uh, you, you make loops, yeah, I make loops. And then you text loops. Like I noticed with texting loops, like you could send people and they're they gonna see it on their phone. They gonna listen in their car. In an email, it's like you only really listen to the studio or you at home. But you might text them something, they might hear your loop. And like, oh, that's hard. Like, I'm finna click up when I get home. Then they gonna text you later. Yo, I need more shit. I need more shit like this, this, and this. So now you actually feel like at least your samples are going somewhere for a purpose. And like it's not just you're not just sending out go like you say go fund me like this praying for some shit to happen. Like at least you building up a network with them folks. And then since you've been selling these people, texting them loops, they might be like, yo, you in the city, like pull up at this session, da 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 Cause they know you, you're not just a, even another email in the, in the thing where they're in the studio like going through shit, there's another name. What would be the easiest way to live off of music? I think the easiest way to live off of music Sound is kids. becoming the quickest, a content creator. The quickest creator. way? Like the quickest way? Yes. The quickest yeah. way, you sell something. You sell you something. Make content, like at the end of the day, entrepreneur. it don't matter what you do to make 
Like, if you're a producer, there's different revenues to make money. But in order to make money off that revenue, you need traffic. In order to get traffic, you're going to have to need content, bro. That's facts. So if my number one factor, like, if I had a to-do list and it was three things on there every day, and one is the highest priority to three, my number one would be content, but that's traffic. You have to understand YouTube, you don't have to invest any money to, 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 to put the video out there. It's all for free. You can film it, edit it, and put it out there. In exchange, someone watch it, if they fuck with you, they support you, they buy your whatever you selling, you see what I'm saying? I just got a big placement. What should be my next move? Lawyer up. Lawyer up? A lawyer. lawyer up, y'all. Go on Instagram and type in music lawyer. Yeah. Alright, someone said, what's the wildest experience you had with an artist for everyone? Hey man, so listen, one day I was in the studio with the artist, bro. Who's the artist? <laughs> not gonna say? Nah, it was a girl, right? And uh, we was like really late. It was like 3 a.m., bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had to make, you know what I'm saying? You're lying. You already know. <laughs> You're just lying. Like, that's just not true. <laughs> this count. You count. Oh, you mean for real? You count like, so hard. What? Yeah. So what do you mean? I you know what I'm saying? Alright, alright. Hey, you? Alright, Alex, Alex, Alex. Someone said, what are some hardships you guys went through before getting to where you are today? Some hardships for me, man. Like, I had to deal with some, like, some family issues, man. Like, I had to actually deal with a lot of that. Not, not that many people know, bro, but I don't really come from a stable household like that. Like, I, I've been moving around most of the time, most of my life. I had to deal with a lot of divorce. And even to this day, I still deal with family stuff. So that's kind of a hardship that I deal with, bro. Um, but that's that's really it. It wasn't ever really like a consistency or motive. Like that's what got me to be consistent motivation to really change that situation of mine. And um, I guess leaving school and being lonely, bro. I was like hella lonely, bro. Like my girl left me and stuff, bro. So, bro I was like, dude, I was real lonely, bro. And I was just watching anime, bro. Like it got bad, bro. So like that. Of course, we all have hardships, bro. But to get to this point, you know, we just try to look at it and be like, man, you know, now I live a good, a pretty good life, you know, better than two years ago. And so we just gotta keep on going, bro. I'll compare myself to people. Just like I'll see somebody, like what TV said, like seeing a dude younger than you that's doing 10 times better, like that shit demotivates you. Is that a word? Unmotivates? That shit unmotivates. Yeah, demotivates. Demotivate. That shit demotivates you. And what, what is that a real word? Yeah. <laughs> like right. mentally tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know, bro. It's just like my hardships. I don't know. It's just like, yeah, like personal, like family shit. But I also. It took it took a while to convince my pops, you know, like this music shit. But like, I have pretty supportive parents now. I feel like when you have supportive parents, it's just it makes this shit a lot easier. Um, like, you know, so I don't know. I just think it's mental shit. But you just go one day at a time. You feel me? And you'll get to where you need to go. You just gotta push through that shit. You gotta say fuck all that shit. My parents, my parents did not want none of that shit. They don't want me spending none of my bread. I didn't listen to them. I came to Atlanta. I did whatever I wanted. You gotta ignore them. Like, if, if people don't fuck, if you, if no one's supporting you, you gotta just keep doing what you're doing and just believe it. Especially if that's. You gotta be your main you support want. system. I yeah. say take the risk, bro. If you got supportive parents, exactly. Like, the take worst the thing that can happen is you go back to your supportive parents. You know? Yeah. So you still strike. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Like, take the, a lot of people too. Even for the older generation, like folks who are like want to do shit that we do, and they five, six years older. Like, you could still, you could be just as big and just as successful. It's just you gotta take the risk and avoid all these distractions that <clears throat> life will throw at you along the way. Cause it's not going to be easy until you put in them two, three years of work and it's going to pay off. Yeah. But until then you got to deal with all them distractions and, and money and life and all this shit, whatever you got going on, like everyone got their own little thing. So you got to keep going. Any tips for creating content, how to grow? Um, and make what you want to make. Yeah. Make what you want to make bro. Like, and be consistent. There's nothing wrong with making videos once a week. Because Kavi does it, he does very well. So just focus on giving your best to one video every seven days and put it out there once a week. Don't focus on algorithm, don't focus on none of that. At the end of the day, if you got your brand is on point and you kind of like building into your own type of brand, all the type of sound, you'll be straight, you feel me? Like just make content, keep it consistent, keep it, Go on a level where you know like you could keep up with it. If you want to, oh, I'm going to upload every day. You only want to do that shit for two weeks, I don't do that. It's like upload once a week and keep it consistent. Maybe do that shit for a year. Then kind of up the load with this shit. Man, what the fuck wrong with y'all, bro? Um, I, he's right about that, but I will say something. I will say something. Like He is so right about the quality of your stuff, bro. Like Honestly, I used to think, like, oh, okay, quantity, bro. Like Push, 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 but dude. 
Like, if you're trying to hit the algorithm, even though you're not supposed to focus on that, you still want to hit the algorithm, make sure your stuff is performing as well as it can. The quality really matters, bro, and keep improving the quality and style of your videos, bro. Like, I went from, like, I, I saw a major impact, let's say I was doing this reel, and my bit rate of my reel was, like, super low, like, it looked like a video game, right? Instagram ain't gonna push that. Instagram gonna push something that's, like, super smooth and clean, and it got all, like, the cool effects, like, you know, like all that cool like uh, zoom ins and stuff like that to feed people's ADHD, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because you really is fighting against the algorithm that you, you know people is just for short form content right. like one second, ten seconds. Like you, you fight. Like don't forget, I was telling this the other day. Instagram is entertainment, bro. So even though you're a music producer, a little moving FL screen with a sample ain't gonna really get like people attention like that. Like, I mean, it could though, unless it's like some super crazy sample. Like if you're like. Like, like Ladoni or something, like you got this cool guitar, like cool X loop or something, bro. Like it might get the attention of people, but like it's entertainment, bro. You gotta kind of mix it in too. So if you wanna make the content, bro, make sure you got all that quality on down too. So like what Jesse said, bro. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what's that, bro? Hey, bro, to add on, bro, I think, and this is just general about the whole video, I think one thing that would help a lot of producers is find yourself other producers, and this don't have to be producers who, it don't have to be niggas in your city, bro. Like, because we in an era where you have access to the whole world on your phone, bro, find producers, find a community, or find a group of friends where y'all can work and grind together. Find producers who got the same goals as you, and just work together on them goals. Bro, y'all ain't gotta do every fucking thing, y'all gotta collaborate on every fucking thing. You know, when you working around people who, one, that's better than you, they gonna make you better. Yeah. Two, if they more consistent, I mean, you you are who you hang around, bro. You know how people talk about females. If your girl or this girl you talking to hang around a bunch of hoes, ain't no way that bitch I got them. Um, no, bro. She Facts. feel like her friends. It's the same thing with Facts. your partners, bro. That's if all your partners on. better than you, bro, that shit gonna motivate you to do better. All these niggas, two, three years ago, bro, I was way below these niggas at a sound level. And I was like, bro, how the fuck do I get my shit up? So I had to literally, like, Learn how to make samples, bro. And being around these niggas every day taught me how to sing, how to be consistent. This nigga gave me every fucking sound selection sauce I needed. This nigga no. gave me ways to really actually build myself as a brand, how to work room with niggas. This nigga helped me make samples. Like, these niggas make me better. Dude. The bottom line and the main thing for this video, bro, to be successful, bro, because we all living off of music right now, bro. If you're trying to live off of music, bro, you need to have consistency. You got to have stuff that makes you stand out. And you just got to be able to have a hard determination for this shit bro because there's a lot of people that would just fall off bro they have some of the best shit ever but they just i you know how many people how many producers that we know back in 2020 that was going crazy and just because oh, that was going crazy you know all these cool sample makers all these cool collectives all these cool placements and they just died down died out. Yeah, they no, just no. died out because of their goals and they, they wasn't believing in themselves bro like you got to really fucking life Life is not gonna wait on you and, and pull its punches, bro. So you gotta hit that shit hard as hell back. This is another thing. Don't believe everything you see on Instagram. Yeah. Bro. But tell me why I was just about to say that. Yeah, y'all yeah. always like, how you make a living off music? How you make a living? Bro, I don't know if y'all know, we do not live in mansions. We all, like, you gotta understand this music, this shit come with time. Like, you're not finna get, you, you're not finna get Southside money or Boy Wonder type money within the first two years of producing. You're not finna get to Benny X type level with the first two years of producing. You gotta yeah. really build it up and live a certain way till you get to that point where you can show off on Instagram, oh, my hey, new car, my new this. Yeah. A lot of folks will show you they got this new car, new this and that, but they ain't showing you they, they negative a thousand, they bank account, they credit cards not paid, credit score at 300. Yeah, he's right, bro. Don't believe all that shit on Instagram. All this shit is fake. All yeah, that shit is fake. Where, like, it be, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying this in a way to like shit on niggas, but it's been times where I go to the session and oh, these niggas multi platinum, and I be like, you know what I'm saying? Nigga be like, I gotta head and do my, you know, gotta, Amazon work job tomorrow, or some yeah. shit. Now, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that, bro. Oh, but the only reason why I point man, this out is because, meanwhile, if I never like heard that or seen that, I'm on Instagram and I'm comparing my life to what he's showing on Instagram because everything he's showing on Instagram look good. Look good, but in reality, bro, broke his foot. I ain't gonna say whoa, that. I'm not gonna whoa, say that, but whoa. you know what I'm saying? In reality, like your situation is not as bad. Like I said, to be I'm living off your music, so. you're really good. good. But back to what he's saying when it comes to Instagram, this is really where we gonna end it on. Bro, stop yeah. letting these fucking producer posts get to y'all fucking head, bro. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Bro. Laugh at that shit, but bro, some of y'all niggas really be dictating y'all whole career off of that shit. Like y'all niggas be building a producer Bible off that shit, bro. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Don't, fo don't, don't focus on that, bro. Just work and get your be around people. 
who focus. You know what I'm saying? And want to get to where you want to get around. Hey, right, but that's the end of the video, y'all. Now we get to the real shit, man. Fuck these bitch ass producers, nigga. Yeah, nigga. Fuck everybody. Fuck your mom. Fuck your grandma. I'm really about to start saying names. I'm really about to start saying names, nigga. Fuck that bitch ass.